Well, hello everyone, and thank you for joining us from all over the world. Today, we have lots of exciting and innovative updates to share with you. And for that, I'd like to invite Jos to the stage to get us started. Hello, everybody. So, we're at the last month of this year, but we plan to close it out with a bang. So let's first talk for a few minutes about why we are here. The fundamental challenge that Nextcloud tackles is simple. We make it possible to communicate and collaborate over the internet without giving up your privacy, security, or the control over your data. Now, this challenge is getting bigger with AI. On one hand, AI creates an even greater hunger for data at the big tech firms, and you need enormous amounts of data to feed the AI development. On the other hand, AI itself increases the risks of data leak and abuses of our data. So we don't want to live in a world where five big companies are controlling all data, all collaboration, all AI. And this is, of course, where Nexat comes in. So we have built the most advanced on-premises collaboration platform in existence. It has great features, but it's also 100% open source and transparent. And it runs where you want and how you want it. So for us, Nextcloud is a mission, it's a goal, and we work on it in a transparent, open way, together with our community. So I'd like to show a video to give you an idea of how we think and how we work. We believe privacy is a fundamental human right, and everybody should have access to secure communication free from surveillance. We are building decentralized products as an alternative to centralized platforms. People can choose what they want and where they want it. We believe in open source and open standards. Open source is the only way for users to trust their devices. We value sustainability, protecting people, society and the environment. We believe accessibility is a fundamental human right and technology should be accessible to everyone. The time of our users is very important to us. That's why we do our best to make Nextcloud easy to use. We foster diversity from innovation to transparency and collaboration. Working with our communities and supporting marginalized people leads to a better result. So that is how we do what we do. Let's talk about where that has gotten us. So today, Nextcloud is an incredible tool for people to be productive while protecting their data and privacy. For example, it's used by Amnesty International to protect sensitive data for activists and journalists, even in less than friendly places. It's used by millions of pupils and students all over the world to study from home or work together with others, like at universities in France or at schools in Berlin. And it's used by many governments to regain their digital sovereignty, to control the data of themselves and their citizens. It's used by tech enthusiasts all over the world, and it's used by thousands of companies and other organizations to enable remote work while protecting their data. And Nextcloud has become the biggest self-hosted alternative to Microsoft 365 and Google. And it's really amazing to see this reflected in the many awards that we received, like the European Software Freedom Award last month, and the award from the open source experience event in Paris that we had last week. Now, these awards are not just for us. We are building this fantastic product together with our community in an open way, and it wouldn't be possible without all of you. So these awards are as much for everybody who contributes to Nextcloud and is a part of this as it is for us as a company. Now, we as a company are an open, transparent company. We work together with our community and we're not, as a business, relying on venture capital that needs a quick exit through a sale or by going public. Instead, we grow in an organic way by about 50 to 70% a year, allowing us to continue to invest in Nextcloud in a sustainable way and with a long-term vision. Now, this independence and in health is a key reason why we were able to recently welcome Roundcube, an open-source, on-premises webmail project, to Nextcloud. You can see on our website some more information about this an interview with Frank and Thomas, the Roundcube founder. Now, I don't want to keep you waiting any longer. So, today we are launching Nextout Hub 7, the best version of Nextout yet and the next iteration in a wonderful product. Now, Nextout Hub 7 has a strategic focus on optimizing the digital workspace, the online virtual space where teams are productive and work together. So for this release, we made improvements in nine areas. 
These include Nexart files, talk, office and groupware, but we also introduce several cross-application features that help you be more productive all across these applications. And there's also news in the area of artificial intelligence and other integrations in Nexart with other applications. Now, let's get started with Nexart files. I would like to ask Nemisha from our design team to the States to talk about what's happening there. So, let's explore Nextcloud Files, where your documents, videos, and photos live. Nextcloud Files is a powerful document management system, making it easy to share and access your documents wherever you are. Today, we will follow one of Christine's adventures. She is going to take a well-deserved break from work, and she's going to research her next kayaking vacation. Like most Nextcloud users, her day starts off on the dashboard, where she sees a lot of things like her colleagues' recent statuses, her chat messages, her important mails, upcoming appointments, and so much more. But we also know that not everybody is like Christine starting their day on the dashboard, so you asked for it and we listened. In Hub 7, you can now change the order of apps that you see in the top bar, and the app that's first in the row is going to be the one that opens when you visit your next cloud. On some servers, the administrator perhaps wants to ensure that a certain app always comes first. And for that, we made sure that admins can override the app order. So now let's turn our attention to Nextcloud Files, where Christine manages her documents. Nextcloud Files is a fast and efficient document management system, making it easy to work with your files using favorites, different views, easy sharing, and much more. She stored a form about her vacation earlier this week. So she goes to her files, and Nextcloud knows that this form is important, which is why it's shown right at the top as a recommended file. And in the sidebar, Christine can manage sharing, versions, and more. In Hub 7, we merged the comments and the activities, so now Christine can immediately see that her colleague shared the PDF with her and that he left her a comment. When Christine opens the form, she sees that it's a PDF, and she finds out that in Hub 7, you can fill in the PDF without even leaving Nextcloud. You can even annotate and draw on it and save the changes. And by the way, this fantastic feature was a contribution from a community member, showing how our wonderful community helps make Nextcloud better for everyone. Once she's filled in the form and sent it, Christine wants to check the kayaking photos from some years ago to find that wetsuit that she used. She remembers having edited and shared the photos using the Nextcloud Photos app. To help her find the pictures more easily, in Hub 7, we sort the photos by date using the metadata in the photos. When Christine views the picture, she sees that it's a live photo, which can now be uploaded from the iOS app and viewed in Nextcloud Photos. From the sidebar, she can see the metadata with a nice map showing the location, and below that, there are details like the camera make and settings. So next, I'd like to talk about another major improvement, the advanced search. The advanced search makes it super easy to find anything that you're looking for because you can search and filter for different resources. So Christine can use this to look maybe for a zip archive with her photos from last year. So whether it's a chat message, a document, or a compressed file with fantastic vacation pictures, the advanced search helps you find it. But of course, Christine isn't all play. She is managing several important projects, and before getting ready to leave, she needs to make sure that those projects are in good hands. For each project, she has created her own project team using the Contacts app, and during her absence, she can hand over the management of the team to a team member. The team has a group folder assigned where their files are stored. The project has some basic information on top, and members can quickly find other resources like tasks and chat rooms in the related resources. Christine doesn't have to worry that while she's away, important documents get modified. Thanks to versioning, she can always go in and name a version to find it later, and she can even compare different versions. Nextar will be smart in cleaning up older versions and only keeping the ones that have been given a name. And if really needed, Christine has access to data on the go. The Nextcloud mobile and desktop clients offer seamless integration between your devices, making it easy to share or edit files even while you're traveling. A great example of this integration is the automated file locking. When Christine opens a file in Nextcloud Office, for example, 
and her colleagues are trying to edit it on the desktop, they're going to get warned that they can't make changes to that file. And if she's editing a file on her desktop, for example, in Microsoft Word, Nextcloud makes sure that a colleague won't be able to edit it in the browser. Christine can also seamlessly switch between browser and desktop. She chooses Edit Locally in the three-dot menu, which opens the file on her desktop. And this is super useful for kinds of files that Nextcloud can't handle, like Photoshop files. And similarly, she can also open a file in her Nextcloud right from her file manager, making it super easy for online collaboration. In both cases, Nextcloud will use file locking to avoid editing conflicts. Other improvements in Hub 7 include smarter notification handling and a lot of smaller fixes on desktop. The iOS app now has machine learning-based document scanner for text recognition, and the Android app also allows you to manage and delete accounts now. For sensitive data, Christine also has an excellent option. For an upcoming event, she is managing some sensitive files in a fully end-to-end -end encrypted folder. This means that not even the admins who have access to the server can view these files. When sharing them with her colleagues, the files are encrypted on Christine's client and securely sent to the recipient without ever being decrypted on the server. This true client-side encryption mechanism provides the highest level of security and confidentiality. To help Christine and other users get their tasks done faster, we also worked on improving the performance of Nextcloud. We reduced the load on the server by improving the handling of shares and accessing storage making the calendar app faster, improving the speed of listing files, and we moved our brute force protection mechanism to a memory cache. And that last one really helps with large installations. We also worked on modernizing our code base. The Nextcloud Files app was rewritten in Vue.js, which will make further improvements to files a lot easier. Additionally, this also had the benefit of improving a whole range of accessibility issues. We fixed nearly 250 problems, like improving the contrast around buttons, labels for actions, and the tab order of elements on the screen. This greatly improves the experience of using Nextcloud for people who use screen readers or keyboards for navigating. And last but not least, we made some improvements to the system monitor. This app gives admins information about their server and its status so they can track for issues. If you're an admin and you want to find out about things like CPU and memory load, disk and active users, this is the place to go. In this release, we also added the ability to see information from outside the Nextcloud folder, like the PHP and database configurations. And of course, if you're concerned that this is a security risk for you, you can also disable this feature. As you can see, Nextcloud Files is designed to make the life of users like Christine easier, helping them to accomplish their tasks quickly and efficiently. We have put together a video to give another view at how Christine gets her work done and private tasks done with Nextcloud. Meet Christine, a project manager who is researching her next big adventure. Let's tag along. One of Christine's goals today is to research and book a well-deserved vacation one she's been dreaming of for the last several weeks. And today is the day. But first, like many people using Nextcloud, her day starts on the dashboard. There she sees colleagues' recent statuses and chat messages, new emails and her upcoming appointments, knowledge base article changes, and much more, all in one place. Some people prefer to start in another app. By changing the order of the apps in her settings, she can change which app will load when she visits her next cloud. Now, photos come first. That means Christine can enjoy the pics from her kayaking vacation three years ago. And guess what? Kayaking is on her mind again. Christine can explore the pictures from three years ago. To see where a picture is taken, she can check the sidebar. The EXIF data photographs carry is used to sort her photos by date but it also has information like what camera was used to take the picture and where it was taken. And this is the location she wants to visit again. Navigating to her documents, Christine locates the PDF that was shared with her earlier. Nextcloud predicted it was an important file, showing it on top of the file list. Kieran shared the PDF with Christine and he left her a comment. It's easy to reply right there. Also easy is filling in the PDF form Christine can go right ahead adding the information she needed for the trip. 
She can also add notes if needed, making it super easy. Before submitting the PDF, Christine wants to check out one other document, the legal terms for the kayaking trip. She opens the search to find it quickly. If the terms of the service seem decent, it's time to book that vacation. With Nextcloud, it is as fun as it is easy. Plan your next adventure, seamlessly collaborate with others remotely, and finish your tasks easier and faster with Nextcloud Hub. Visit nextcloud.com today and see how much more we can do for you. So for a quick recap, Nextcloud Hub 7 brings many improvements like a changeable app order, PDF annotations, and my personal favorite, the advanced search. We hope you enjoy using these features as much as I do, and we are looking forward to your feedback. And for the next improvement, I want to ask Greta to the stage. Hello, everyone. Now I'm going to show you what we improved on Nextcloud Groupware apps. You manage your mail, contacts, and tasks with Nextcloud Groupware. As Christine is going on vacation, her emails and tasks have to be handled by other people, in this case, Ross. Let's have a look on how our Groupware apps make it easier for them. Before leaving on her vacation, the first thing Christine would do is to go to her availability settings. There, she manages her office hours. As you see, Christine is unavailable on Friday. Colleagues who try to book a meeting will see that she isn't around. Her status is also set to do not disturb, so she doesn't receive any notifications on her phone. New is that she can now also set her out of office message here. The status will be carried out to other parts of Nextcloud. Let's have a look at that. Nextcloud Calendar app is where Christine, Ross, and other users manage their calendars. It has an appointment feature where others can book in meetings in your calendar following some rules that you have previously set. The Nextcloud Calendar will automatically show Christine's vacation. Nextcloud Contacts help Ross track his colleagues. Here's the view of Christine. He can see on the right what resources they're working on together. In the contact menu, he can see the user status that is automatically updated with the out of office message. And when she's back, it reverts back to the previous message. We improved the menu, sorting the status by when it was changed. Ross can search and find Christine or other colleagues and email or chat directly from here. Beside out of office message, you also see the calendar meetings here. So your colleagues can see when you are unavailable because you are in a meeting or because you are in a call. When you have set yourself as do not disturb, your status will not change even if you are in a call or a meeting. Christine's out of office message is also shown on talk. Colleagues will see it when they chat with her. In Nextcloud Mail, her out of office message is automatically enabled. So people who contact her will receive a notice to talk to Ross. Ross will get a lot of messages from everybody. His work starts by looking at the state of all tasks. And for that, Nextcloud Deck, the Kanban planning tool is the place to go to. Thanks to the support to cover images in Hub 7, Christine has already added some flair to the board. Ross has reached out to his potential keynote speaker. He edits the card to record what he did. He removes the assignment of Christine and attaches the keynote speaker overview. Now he can mark his task as completed. For this release, we also improved the keyboard shortcut in DAC, making it easier and more efficient for those of you who heavily use their keyboards. Events do, of course, need more than one keynote speaker, so Ross wants to find an email from Christine about that. To make that easier for Ross and everyone, we introduce advanced search with Hub 7. The mail is in an inbox, shared with him by Christine. Ross can read the email and reply in her name. Nextcloud Mail also supports signed and encrypted email with PGP and SMIME. This way, Ross and Christine know the content of their email is safe. To make it easier for Ross to visually find some emails, he adds a tag to an email. With Hub 7, Ross can choose a custom color. For example, Ross can tag all his emails related to Keynote Speaker as Keynote, and then when those emails are not relevant anymore, he can delete the tag which removes it from all messages. This is now possible with Hub 7. Ross has to find some other emails. To make that easier, we improve the search in mail further. The filter box on top can now optionally search the whole content of the emails. 
It is now also possible to sort the newest or oldest emails on top. To keep Ross from getting overwhelmed by mail, our AI-trained priority inbox helps him focus on the most important emails. Going through his emails, Ross noticed that there are a couple of to-dos here. Mail has different ways to make managing tasks easier. He decides to create a task in DAC right from mail. For the emails that contain a calendar invite, he adds them directly to the calendar. Some of his emails he snoozes, so he's reminded at a later point about them. When Ross then replies to a keynote speaker, he wants to insert a link to the location of the office. With Hub 7, he can call on the smart speaker by typing a slash, same as in deck cards or in a document or in a chat. An emoji can be added just like in talk, text, deck or notes by typing a colon and a description. Nextcloud has great integration with Microsoft Outlook. Ross and Christine use the Nextcloud Outlook add-in to send big files in emails as links or create a talk room when they create a calendar meeting, just like in the Nextcloud calendar app. Meanwhile, the Exchange integration allows the calendar items to be synchronized between Outlook and Nextcloud so Christine can use whatever calendar is most suitable of whatever she's doing. As you can see, Nextcloud Group Prayer is designed to make the life of users like Ross easier, helping them to accomplish their tasks quickly and efficiently. We have put together a video to give you another view on how Ross gets his work done with Groupware. Christine is going on vacation. That means she has to hand over her current tasks to her colleagues, something Nextcloud makes a breeze. The last thing before leaving is the out-of-the-office configuration, conveniently located in Christine's personal settings. Here, she can tell everybody who will replace her and when she's back. The Nextcloud calendar will automatically show Christine's vacation. This means that when others try to book a meeting, they will see she is busy. Her user status will also automatically be updated with her out-of-office message, visible throughout Nextcloud Hub, from the calendar to the contacts menu, and of course mail, where people who contact her receive the message that they should contact Ross. Since Ross will be taking over from Christine, he checks the Contacts app. There he can see shared resources with Christine. Did she give him access to all documents, chats, and tasks he needs during her vacation? Of course, Ross's work starts by looking at the state of all tasks. For that, DEC, Nextcloud's lightweight Kanban planning tool, is likely the place to go. Ross has reached out to this potential keynote speaker, so it's time to mark this task as done. Time to inform the keynote speakers about the event. First, to find the email of the last speaker. Ross found the mail. And he creates a new tag for it and other mails related to the event he has to organize. He assigns the tag a color, making them easier to find. To improve his search for other speakers, Ross uses the search filter box and sort order to help him find other speakers Christine mentioned. When Ross finds another potential keynote speaker, he replies. As he's in a hurry, he lets the integrated AI text generation come up with a friendlier message. He now inserts a link to the talk room where the remote event will take place, just typing a slash and using the smart picker. At the end, topping it off with an emoji, easy to add like everywhere else in Nextcloud. While organizing conferences can be stressful, Nextcloud makes sure to lighten the load as much as possible. Plan your next adventure. Seamlessly collaborate with others remotely and finish your tasks easier and faster with Nextcloud Hub. Visit nextcloud.com today and see how much more we can do for you. We made a lot of improvements in Groupware, and there is more I did not yet cover. I personally think integration of status in all apps is one of my favorite features, but we look forward to your feedback and tell us which one do you like best. Let me introduce you to Firus for the next improvement in Hub 7. After receiving documents, the next step is working on those documents, and this is where Next.Office comes in. So now Ross's responsibility is to make the event happen. He has to work on notes and also has to edit and share knowledge-based documents, mainly lots of work which requires real-time document editing with his co-workers. And the good news is for him that these features are already deeply embedded throughout Nextcloud. To structure her thoughts, Christine 
always keeps notes for herself. And for that, Nextcloud Notes is an awesome tool. Using the mobile and web app, she can manage any number of notes. She can also add images, sketches, and tables. With Hub 7, she can now share a single note with her colleagues or publish it with external users using a public link. The smart speaker is a key part of this, making it easy to add almost anything to a note, just like a talk, collectives, or mail. You can share a location, insert a file, link to chat room, add a table, video, GIF, and many more objects. So now Ross has to know how to plan many aspects of a virtual event. What he will do is to take the help of Nextout knowledge management tool, which we call collectives. Just like modern wiki, this is where Nextout users read and share documentations. It tracks different versions and attachments, makes it easy to link between document pages and allows any number of users to edit the same document at the same time. The documentation is stored in files instead of a database. So, Ross shares the speaker notes with the external keynote speakers. He accesses the knowledge base with insights and feedback from the previous edition. He is using the new full width settings, which is particularly useful with such white tables. Ross realizes this page is also relevant for this year, and he uses the improved page move feature to shift it to the new collective for the year 2024. Meanwhile, that big table, it might be easy for him to use Nextcloud Tables app. Tables is a fantastic tool to manage structured data and processes like that, making it a no-code platform. Ross is already using it, as the company uses tables to track vacation requests. It gives everyone an easy view just what is relevant for them. And this would be useful for the conference as well. We will let Ross consider using the table apps while we talk about handling office documents. Ross and other Nextcloud users use the Nextcloud Office applications like spreadsheet, word processing, and presentations. They all find it is very compatible with Microsoft Office format. The improvement to our core Office applications represent the fifth major area of improvements in Nextcloud Hub 7. Ross checks the slides for the presenters. We expanded the set of fonts provided in Nextcloud Office. So now Ross has a wide range of font options to choose the perfect one. Ross also wants to collect event feedback from people. And for that, he will be using an online survey. So he creates a nice QR code linking to Nextcloud form survey. And he's happy to see that creating a QR code is now integrated in Nextcloud office. After the event, Ross and Christine will be able to review those results from the survey and use them to improve the event for the next year. Ross will also track attendance in a spreadsheet using the improved conditional formatting. He will make sure Christine can see in just a second who showed up and who did not. As always, we spend effort on performance and network handling. Especially when you are on a slow network, it is important that the Office application still works well. The loading time of Nextcloud Office is now even faster. As Ross, Christine, and other Nextcloud users rely heavily on Nextcloud Office, we did a ton of other improvements, especially in the area of accessibility. For example, keyboard shortcuts were improved, copy pasting works more smoothly, and many dialogues were improved and cleaned up, like the conditional formatting you just saw. As you can see, Nextcloud Office is designed to make the life easier for users like Ross. It is helping them to accomplish their task quickly and more structured way. We have made a small video which will show you Ross's event planning journey with Nextcloud Office. Real-time collaboration on notes, knowledge base articles, and documents is deeply embedded in Nextcloud through our various Office components. Here, Christine has been keeping notes to structure her thoughts. And with Hub7, we made it easy for her to share these with her colleague Ross or publish them as read-only content. Ross uses Collectives, Nextcloud's knowledge base application to help him plan any aspects of his virtual event. He notices this page is relevant for the upcoming year as well and copies it over for his new event. Now let's take a look at how Ross reviews the presentation slides. 
Finding the right folder is easy as a simple search, and there are various slide decks. Nextcloud Office has excellent compatibility with a wide variety of commonly used formats, including Microsoft Office documents. So the slides will look great, no matter where they come from. Fonts are key for Office compatibility. Nextcloud Office comes with a ton of built-in fonts, plus the option for administrators to easily add more. It also makes it easy for anyone to adjust fonts in their Office documents. Here, Ross gets a brilliant idea. People can give their feedback for the event in an online survey. So he creates a QR code linked to a Nextcloud form survey. This feature is now integrated in Nextcloud Office. And once the event is done, Ross tracks the event's attendance in a spreadsheet and uses the improved conditional formatting to help Christine see clearly who showed up and who did not. Plan your next adventure. Seamlessly collaborate with others remotely and finish your tasks easier and faster with Nextcloud Hub. Visit nextcloud.com today and see how much more we can do for you. So, let me summarize all the improvements. Collectives are now easier to move and copy around. You can share notes with others. Lots of improvements in the area of accessibility, performance, and network handling. And personally, my favorite improvement is the QR code generator. I find it quite fun to create QR codes and link it with different links. It makes me look smarter. And now I would invite Anna to talk about the further improvements. The event is getting closer, and it is time for us to prepare things in talk, where we cover our next major area of improvement with Hub7. He uses it a lot for his communication, but the event itself will also take place there. Combining live chat with video conferencing and presenting tools, Nextcloud Talk is a well-rounded video chat and webinar platform, perfect for this task. Nextcloud Talk is also a real collaboration powerhouse, where Ross can add his documents and work on them with others in the room. To avoid a gap between a file and its description, Ross adds a caption directly when he uploads the file, a new feature in Hub7. Ross uses Talk intensively and often forwards messages between chats or keeps links to messages in his notes. To help him with tracking those messages, we added a note to self feature. Ross uses this to keep quick notes, save links to files, and forwards reminders of important messages from the team, accessible only to himself. Ross picks a message and adds it to his notes to self. Of course, that is just one way to manage messages in Talk. For example, he turns it directly into a task or sets a reminder on the chat message. Before setting up the Talk conversation for the event, Ross decides to do a quick check-in with the partners. Some are only available by phone right now, so we added the ability to add them to the room by phone number. He can let Talk dial their phone numbers to add them to the call. Other team members can dial their own phone numbers to join the call on the go if the moderator has given them permission. At the end of the call, the call summary bot shares a summary with the attendees and the to-do items agreed on during the call. Nextcloud Talk offers integrated call recording, even an optional AI-powered transcript feature. Ross, of course, wants to make sure everybody's aware of this recording. The new release makes that easy. He configures the room to require recording consent before people attend the stream. From the command line, server administrators can generate a list of people that consented for compliance needs. For attendees, the video audio dialogue is where they have to decide if they're OK with being recorded. If they rather not be recorded, they can keep their camera and microphone off. Christine, who doesn't want others to see the beautiful vista from a hotel room, picks a background or blur to hide it. Talk now asks the guests for their names before they join, so everybody knows how to address each other. Of course, you can still call yourself Albert Einstein if you prefer not to share your real name. Colleagues who are participating in the event will get a notification when the call begins. Their phone will ring, they will get a browser notification, or their desktop client will play a sound and show a pop-up. Accepting the call in the pop-up from the desktop client shows the video settings dialog. The event has begun, and the first presentation is starting. In his opening talk, Ross can connect with the audience better, as his video miniature is shown in the bottom right. Viewers can hide the speakers if they want, or if they want to see others, they can open up the bottom bar, which shows the other attendees. The audience is excited, and they applaud the inspiring opening talk with reactions, 
which in Hub 7 are now nicely animated. During the event, Ross uses breakout rooms to split up the audience and allow people to discuss subjects in smaller groups. He and other moderators switch between the rooms to keep an eye on things. In the breakout room, participants use a poll to choose a subject for a discussion. Ross elevates a user to moderator to help him manage the room. They can give people the ability to speak, share their screen, and so on. These and more features are all available not only in the browser, but also in our clients on Android, iOS, and on the desktop for Linux, Windows, and Mac. As you can see, Nextcloud Talk is designed to make the life of users like Ross easier, helping them accomplish their tasks quickly and efficiently. We have put together a video to give you another view at how Ross gets his work done in Talk. Organizing an event means communicating with a ton of people. In this video, we follow Ross, who brings an event to life using Nextcloud Talk for his conversations. Ross prepares a Q&A session for this afternoon through Nextcloud Talk. The preparations include quick check-ins with cross-functional teams across the organization. He remembers to share the cover image for the presentation so it can be used by all teams, and he adds a caption reminding his colleagues about the event. Ross also writes a few reminders to himself on the note to self chat as he addresses the different concerns from different teams. To brief the keynote speakers, Ross has created a separate chat room. There, he'll have a call with each of the speakers to go over the logistics and subjects. One of the keynote speakers is traveling, so Ross dials them in using the new telephone dial-out feature in Nextcloud. With this feature, Ross can just enter the phone number and the speaker gets a call they can just pick up. Now the virtual event itself is getting near. Let's see how Ross sets up the talk room for this. He makes the room visible for others in the company, then turns on the requirement for recording consent. Privacy matters and people should have a choice. Message expiration is not needed for this event, but it makes sense to set up a lobby until, say, an hour before the event. This means conversations only start shortly before things kick off. He also limits permissions. Participants can always be given the ability to share audio and video by the moderator. But by default, it's better turned off to avoid distractions. Last, he turns on the call summary bot. It's nice to get an overview of the event at the end. Let's see how this works out for the visitors. First, they are asked to enter their name and then wait in the lobby. Once the event kicks off and they prepare to join the call, they are asked for recording consent. They can keep their camera and microphone off, of course, if they're not happy being recorded. A few people have already joined in and the engagement is already going through the roof. Some attendees are conversing through video while others are writing their thoughts on the chat section. When suddenly, animated cheer emojis erupt as Ross welcomes everyone to the Q&A session. The meeting is in full swing now, and Ross shares his screen for everyone to see. He's shown on the bottom right as his enthusiasm shines alongside his presentation. Of course, you can just focus on the screen share or see other speakers in the call. The Q&A was a success. Plan your next adventure, seamlessly collaborate with others remotely, and finish your tasks easier and faster with Nextcloud Hub. Visit nextcloud.com today and see how much more we can do for you. Talk has improved in many ways, from small but important touches like showing the speaker during a screen share or animating the call reactions to important abilities like telephone dial-out or being able to store notes for yourself. Personally, I really think that the telephone dial-out feature is a big deal. What do you like the most? We look forward to hearing how Talk works for you. Let me introduce Brent for the new improvements in Hub 7. I'll be talking about artificial intelligence related features in Hub 7. And last year we introduced many artificial intelligence features in Nextcloud. And I would like to give you a tour of what's here today and what's coming next as well. As our AI offerings in Nextcloud evolve, we're also aware of its challenges from big tech centralization and privacy considerations to environmental challenges as well. At Nextcloud, we want to offer AI to make your life easier, but we also want to be transparent about the downsides. Therefore, we created our ethical AI rating system to help you decide which AI features are right for you. We give each integration a score, 
from red, orange, yellow, and green. This is based on three factors that address some key concerns with AI. First is the software open source that allows you to adapt the training, perhaps to eliminate bias or optimize some energy usage. Second is the training model freely available. This allows you to run it wherever you'd like, including your own data center so that your data doesn't leak. Third is the training data freely available. That way you can look for bias and other issues and retrain the model if that's important to you. We not only provide transparency with our AI implementations, but also choice. We've taken a different approach to others and want you to have some choice between various AI options. So we worked hard to ensure that for all features like translations, text processing, or dictation, we offer multiple options with on-premise and also remote choices. In this way, Nextcloud already makes it possible to use remote AI services, such as ChatGPT, DeepL, or even Dolly. But our focus is to build and provide true open source and local AI, which is in sync with our values and our ethical AI rating system. Along with more commercial options, which are disabled by default on your Nextcloud, many popular open source AI models are also available, with the ability to connect any model that you choose. These include, for example, Aeroboros, Whisper, GPT for all, and many more. Now, AI is becoming an integral part of Nextcloud. Some of you may be hesitating when I say that. But the great thing is AI and machine learning have been a part of Nextcloud Hub in many ways, both obvious in recent releases and working in the background for you already. For example, these AI and machine learning features in Nextcloud already run 100% locally and are 100% open source. We've included face and object recognition that doesn't send your photos to third parties. Our smart inbox and mail, for example, is trained on your data and also on your server. And call transcripts are generated locally as well, just to name a few. We've also introduced AI features that are more prominent and interactive. A few months ago, we introduced you to the Nextcloud Assistant, the industry's first AI assistant hosted completely on your own server. It is based on a large language model, is 100% open source, and can run fully on-premise with no data sent to third parties. Users like Christine can now find their Nextcloud Assistant in many places. First, it's at the top right of the Nextcloud Hub interface, always ready for your questions. Christine clicks and asks the assistant to do something for her. Here, she asks it for some tips to organize her event. The assistant will then get to work finding the answers for her. And when done, it provides the results to her request. In this case, some very useful tips for organizing that online event. Now, this works everywhere in Nextcloud Hub, but there are a few places where we've integrated Nextcloud Assistant in special ways. First, while working in documents. While selecting a piece of text, the special icon on the right will present you with the Nextcloud Assistant. You can then ask the Assistant to summarize something for you, or reformulate your text, or present you with a headline. You could then insert the results if you're happy with them. We also integrated the Assistant in Nextcloud Mail. It summarizes those long-winded email threads for Christine, saving her time when reading her email. And of course, the assistant can help Christine to write and answer email as well. She can open the smart picker by typing a slash, choosing text generation, and then enters her prompt. She then clicks the results, and if useful, can insert it into her email. Of course, she can also adjust the generated text before sending the results out to make sure they're just right. Now, we also want you to be able to use this feature in conversations. The assistant can already be used to translate chat messages. It can also write text for you or generate images that you insert into your chats. We also have an assistant chat bot, which is available in our new app store. Christine can ask the assistant to help her plan her next trade show event, for instance, directly in her talk conversation. So a lot is possible already, and today I'm very excited to introduce our newest AI feature developments. 
A big development in the world of AI is several companies are starting to offer large language model services. While it is new, it promises to make it possible even for smaller organizations to benefit from artificial intelligence without having to resort to just a handful of big tech companies like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and OpenAI. Such services can be used with your Nextcloud Assistant. Another exciting development is that more companies are developing large language models, including the German-based Aleph Alpha. We have developed support for Aleph Alpha, so it can now be used with your Nextcloud Assistant. This is a great solution for users who want to use online services, but would rather keep their data from being transferred outside of Europe. Next, we worked on improving the control administrators have for the usage of AI in Nextcloud. AI operations are heavy and consume many resources. When using online services, this can become costly, so we made it possible to configure a limit to how many operations users can submit. We also worked on polishing the user experience. As operations take some time, depending on available resources, users can choose to wait or be notified when a result is made available. If they choose to be notified, then a push notification will appear on their phone, their desktop, or the web interface with the results. Now we have talked about where AI in Nextcloud is currently. We also covered our ethical AI approach, and we deeply integrated a variety of features from smart inbox in mail, or translations in talk, to text and image generation as well, and of course, our Nextcloud Assistant. But now I'd like to talk about what's coming next, what we're currently working on here at Nextcloud. You might be aware that about three months ago, we announced a collaboration with the German state Schleswig-Holstein. Our plan was to make it possible for AI to help in situations that require specialized knowledge. For example, filling out forms at a German state. Today, we can give a sneak peek of the very first results of this collaboration. I'm excited to announce the Nextcloud Assistant with Context Chat. Now, Context Chat is an amazing capability of the Nextcloud Assistant, where it is able to reference your documents, your emails, chat messages, and more, to provide you with helpful context-aware answers to your questions and your queries. Now, let's talk quickly about how this works. Context Chat runs as a microservice along the Nextcloud server. It will index data from your Nextcloud and store this information in a local vector database. When a user submits a query, the configured large language model then uses the information in the vector database to answer your questions. But this is not limited to a specific large language model. You can use both locally running AI models or remote AI services, whatever you choose. Now, I'm sure you're very curious what the Nextcloud Assistant can do for you when it is enabled by Context Chat. So let's have a look. Here, Christine asked the Assistant to create a summary of the internal processes for organizing a remote conference, which is documented in the knowledge base at her company. This is then easy for her to share the results with her colleague, Ross. Christine then asked questions about her email. She asked the assistant to list all the tasks that Ross emailed to her in the last week. Or maybe Ross wants to know how to book a vacation for himself after the conference is done. So he asked for a quick summary of the steps required to do so. What's noteworthy is that we've introduced support for alternative large language models such as Aleph Alpha, with more to come, of course. We've also added the ability to configure usage quotas and added various UI improvements as well. Stable Diffusion is now available on premises, and the Assistant Talk Bot has been integrated in the new app installation process. But the biggest task that we've been working on is to bring context chat to the next cloud assistant. The new assistant will be vastly better at helping you with your work because it knows both you and your work. And yet, this all happens entirely on your own server or remote AI service of your choice. And the best part is that we're also making a tech demo available of the Nextcloud Assistant with Context Chat, so you can have a look and give it a try. I'd like to invite Yoss back to the stage to tell us about the integrations in Nextcloud Hub 7. So before closing off, we have one more improvement to talk about. As you're undoubtedly aware, Nextcloud is an application platform, and it integrates with tons of third-party tools. These include 
open source apps like MetroMost or Moodle, as well as web services like Colorboard, WebEx, Miro, and others. We also have integration with a variety of Microsoft applications like SharePoint, Active Directory, Microsoft Office, Outlook, and so on. Now, to make it easier to integrate, especially around Nextcloud Talk, we earlier this year introduced the ability to develop bots. These bots can take notifications from another platform, like a monitoring service or an issue tracker, into Nextcloud. Or they can initiate actions from Nextcloud into these tools, like closing an issue or silencing a warning. This is just one area where our open API, the Open Collaboration Services API, makes it possible to talk to an Nextcloud server. To make it easy to integrate using the OCS API into an application, we offer several software development kits to help you add integration features with Nextcloud to your application. Of course, other languages than these four are also supported. Now, to make it easier for you to develop these integrations with Nextcloud in an app, we built the OCS Viewer app. This is a Nextcloud app that makes it super easy to experiment with our API. So you can browse the Open Collaboration Services API, you can try out the request with a variety of parameters, and then you can see the results. Then you can pick the code from a drop-down in whatever language you want, and just copy-paste it into your app, whether you're writing Python, Go, Rust, you name it. So this way you can extend your apps with the ability to talk to Nextcloud, retrieving and storing files or other data. You can check out our developer page to find out more about this. Now speaking of Python, Go, Rust and other languages, as you probably know, Nextcloud apps are traditionally written in PHP with of course some HTML, CSS and JavaScript. But not everybody writes PHP. That's why at the conference we announced that we make it possible to build Nextcloud server apps in your favorite language. These apps are independent from the Nextcloud core, instead interacting through the powerful Open Collaboration Services API. This essentially extends Nextcloud into a microservices architecture. And this has a number of benefits. First, bugs in an app cannot cause problems for other apps or for all of Nextcloud. A second, with more distance between Nextcloud and apps, we can maintain stable APIs for a long time. Third, it's also easier to distribute compute resources. For example, you can create a separate node on the network that runs AI code because it has special hardware for these AI operations. And last but not least, we can control what data apps have access to. So this can also improve security. Now this new server app development kit is using the Open Collaboration Services API and is using Docker for app distribution. So if you want to make an app for this new app ecosystem, you can work with notifications, file action menu items, and talkbots. We have example apps for all these three in a variety of languages. So it should be relatively easy to get started and build an Nextcloud app um, yeah, using any language you want. You can get started at nextcloud.com slash developer where you have tutorials and other information. Now we did more for developers to make it easier to develop, maintain, and distribute Nextcloud apps. So over the last weeks, our team worked especially on our app store, making it easier to browse and faster to use and fixing some issues. But more importantly, they kept working on this vision of cross-language applications in Nextcloud. And this work has paid off. It's now possible to install a non-PHP app with one click on the all-in-one Docker container. Users can simply go to the app store there, click on install on an app, and then the new Docker-based apps will be downloaded and installed, spun up, connected to Nextcloud, and there you go, you can use them. Another thing we worked on there is to improve the process of downloading large amounts of data. A lot of the apps that are in need of an AI model will need to download that, and these can be really big. So yeah, this really helps with AI-like apps, but also other apps that need to download a ton of data to work. So we're really looking forward to your feedback on this development. I mean, I'd love to know if you're planning to write an Excel app in your favorite language and you know, see these apps then appear on our app store. So for this release, our focus has been on evolving this new app ecosystem, which allows developers to build apps and languages beside PHP. And we also improved a lot of existing integrations affecting some of the AI tools, for example. So that wraps up the launch of Nextcloud Hub 7. So today, Nextcloud Hub is the most advanced collaboration platform out there 
And with this release, we made it even better and more advanced. Now, Nexod Hub is really designed to work for everyone, whether you're a government, a home user, a company, university, even a service provider, or a local soccer club. Nexod really is designed to help you stay in control over your data. And of course, the best part is this is available now. The new release can be downloaded already if you're setting up a new server, and it will be rolled out over the coming weeks incrementally to the updater, to our home users and small instances, and it will also become available in our all-in-one Docker image. Now, customers can expect Nexod Enterprise to become available in about four weeks after our additional testing and certification for Nexod Enterprise is complete. We're looking forward to your feedback. And before closing, I want to say again that this would not have been possible without our amazing community. So thank you for making Nexod what it is. And if you too want to get involved, you can. Just check out our website and find out how. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. And see you in 2024.